For over a hundred years, men have been meeting in secret saunas for a very specific reason. There are over 50 of these bathhouses all across the UK serving as a safe space for men to rendezvous. And a place where gay people are. It doesn't have to just be gay people, like where people are and like you have sex. To help provide some information on this touchy subject, we contacted every sauna in the UK. They all declined to comment. So we reached out to the public and asked for the good. And actually, it was like the last days of Rome in there. <laughs> All rules were out the window. The bad. I, I turned up uh, at a sauna once. It was an ambulance and police car outside. And the steamy. I like to visit saunas to show off my length to people. <laughs> the idea that my cock is the biggest I've ever seen is a huge turn on for me. When you start going round the building, they've got a couple of dark rooms um, where sexual activity goes on in a more group way. Um, there's a jacuzzi, there's a sauna and a steam room, um, and, and a rest area, you know, like a rest lounge where you can sit and have a drink and something to eat, uh, chat to people that you might know. Um, but the, usually in the rest areas is where pornography is shown on large screens. Um, so, you know, it's just a case of if you want to meet somebody, you can go off to a private room um, and just shut the door where there's, there's a single bed and uh, lube and condoms and stuff like that. I remember one night I went off down to Brighton and went into a sauna um, and I was very nervous because I'd never been in any way like that. And the guy at the, the door asked me if I'd been before and I said no. So he took me on a tour and showed me all the facilities, gave me a towel and knock a key and so on. And, um, and then I went into the steam room and, uh, and a guy was touching my leg and so I thought, oh, well, fine. And, um, and he said, do you want to go somewhere private? So we went into a private room, uh, did oral sex, no anal sex, but, uh, but we did oral sex and it, it was very nice. It was quite pleasant. I mean, obviously there's some debate in the LGBT community whether saunas are still a necessity, whether they're still relevant. And some people will say, you know, that gives gay people a really bad name, it's seedy, they've had their day. I disagree, you know, I think if people object to them, they can just not go, um, you know, let other people get on with what they're enjoying. I think the first time I ever went to a sauna was when I was about 21 on holiday in Lisbon. I saw it as a, an exotic foreign thing, and I didn't know at that time that such a thing existed here in this country. Um, and I started going to chariots regularly because chariots was the only place I knew of near that did massage for a very reasonable rate. Um, and the price of massage includes entrance to the sauna and all the other facilities. Um, and it really helped. And I've been, yeah, going pretty much every week for the last four years. I like to use saunas because nobody knows you, so you can act about a bit. You know, you can like, be a totally different person inside the sauna. I use it like as an escape. You know, so like if I want to be someone different, I can go to a different sauna and be a different person. But not everybody is a fan of the idea. I don't think wow. it's a safe place to go because they might be, it might be it. like a breeding ground for like STIs. The sauna is much more sexual than like just like speaking to someone on Grinder because it's you're just meeting up with people that you don't know. Whereas mm -hmm. on Grinder, you have like the chance to like get to know them and stuff. And don't they have like? the status of the HIV thing now on Grindr. Yeah, like, not. you know, like, people are safe. You know, like, it kind of takes yeah. the embarrassment out of asking, like, questions if it's... And it's paying to hook up, so I guess, like, young people don't want to do that. Yeah. Cruising is really when uh, you're wandering around looking for somebody that you want to have sex with. Um, and in the solar environment, it's... There are sort of unwritten rules, really, that you're only wearing a towel around your mid middle part anyway. Uh, and some guys may maybe stand there and start rubbing themselves. Um, some guys will, if they're erect anyway, they'll be sitting on a sofa watching porn uh, and they'll open their towel um, and then somebody else might come and sit next to them and start rubbing their leg or something like that. Uh, and then the sexual experience sort of comes out of that. You go around parks and try your luck to get hookups. I thought that was Isn't dogging. Ah. 
Yeah, I'm a little old to be cruising after young guys now, but I like to use the saunas to watch and have other guys watch you. Like, I used to go to, like, playrooms where you could have up to 20 guys having sex at the same time. There's a place up north that has a dark room where you can barely see anybody, so you have to kind of, like, use your hands to figure out where you're going and what's going on. Yeah, that one's really exciting. I manage the outreach work we do in saunas in London. And um, we sort of do different types of interventions in different, in different venues. Some of them we just join up with the NHS and we offer sexual health screening, HIV testing, uh, STI testing. Um, but in quite a few of them, we don't really offer that because quite a lot of the guys, they're in a bit of a bad way. They have addiction issues. And um, what we try to do is talk to them, hopefully sort of one by one to get a bit of confidentiality, find out what their issues are, what drugs they're taking, Obviously, we're completely non-judgmental. We're not saying don't take drugs, but we are aware of the fact that a lot of these guys going to the saunas are often end up in quite a bad way. We see them afterwards back at the office, sort of weepy Wednesday when the party's over. Some of them say things like they're addicted to drugs, they're addicted to sex, and they're addicted to apps like Grinder, and they're trying to sort of unravel that lifestyle uh, where they sort of can want to move on and do other things, you know, in life as well. Uh, but those addictions have taken over their life, um, which is a great shame. A lot of the guys who go there, when we talk to them, you know, when get away from the bravado, they actually say to us that all I really want is to settle down, have a relationship, find love, or even find friendship. But at the moment, they wouldn't really find love or friendship. It literally fell right on top of them because they're so wrapped up in this lifestyle. And for some of the guys, some of the younger guys, what's worrying is they say they've never had sex without taking the drugs. Never come across it at all. I think, um, I think there are some guys that will take something like cocaine or something before they go, um, or maybe other drugs to sort of keep them going and bouncy and so on and so forth. But I've never come across needles or anything like that in the sauna environment. Most saunas are very clean. There's one or two that are a bit dingy and grubby and could do with a coat of paint, but nevertheless they're clean. Um, but poppers is probably the only drug, if you like, that's really used in that culture. Chariots, the largest sauna chain in the UK, recently had its two most popular bathhouses bought out to be knocked down and replaced with luxury hotels. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm a Chariots regular, uh, pretty much more or less weekly. Um, for the last four years or so. And um, I suppose the first I heard was a Pink News, uh, you know, the website Pink News article, just with really short notice. I think it was three weeks before it closed last Sunday. Um, it, you know, it was a bit of a bombshell. Um, my first instinct was, OK, let's start campaigning, petitioning. And I went and I spoke to the staff in there, but they said there's no point. It was a forced purchase. There's literally nothing we can do. We're all going to be unemployed in three weeks' time. Um, and then, but before it actually closed, the Streatham branch, uh, again, a surprise. I've never been there, but it's a, one of four, I think, chariots have got as a chain. That closed on Valentine's Day. Um, actually before the Shoreditch one. Alternatives to saunas such as Grinder have their risks to consider as well. Like, to be honest, I think, in my opinion, I think they're all, like, negative things. I don't think they bring anything positive, like, to a gay person's life, just because it's, like, hook up and throw away, to be honest. It's not, not meaningful, and you never know, like who you're gonna meet and it's mm. oh yeah there's like, like my my classmate that got killed yeah on grinder yeah yeah oh that like last year like like a guy messaged him on grinder like asked for a meet up uh, like a meet up and then he got drugged and then got killed it was on the yeah. news actually like four only victims yeah like got killed from poisoning mm. and it was like Nuna's classmate yeah. in his fashion yeah yeah, I, I turned up uh, at a sauna once, there was an ambulance and police car outside and I went in uh, and the guy who, who owned it said, uh, oh, he said, I'm sorry, we're closing. I said, well, what's happened? And he said, oh, someone's had a heart attack in the sauna. Um, and it was an elderly man who uh, sadly had his heart attack then. Um, but I said, well, did he have sex first? <laughs> and he said, I don't know. <laughs> so I hope he did. At least if he'd done that, he'd have gone happy. 
Even with the potential risks, saunas serve as a safe place for men to meet around the country for sexual encounters, friendship and socialising, and give them a chance to slip away behind the steam.